Hello, and welcome back to Hemophyte Breakdowns. Today, I want to talk about test cutting with paper. Um, there aren't a lot of solo sword training activities that I actually like or find valuable, but test cutting is certainly one of them. Um, it tends to have its own competition, so the training you get here correlates one-to-one -to, -one to that. But more importantly, it's arguably the best way to train how to... Uh, basically get tip velocity, get power and structure in your uh, cuts, and it's the best way to force yourself to have good edge alignment. Um, but recently, there's been a tatami shortage in you know the entire United States, as far as I understand, and they have become prohibitively expensive to cut with, and they were always pretty annoying to soak and roll yourself anyway. Uh, but thanks to that tatami shortage, people have figured out that you can take uh, this is 30 pound, but you usually want to take 70 pound or 75 pound craft paper and just put a roll up on the ceiling and roll it down and cut that way. And what has been found is that it can give you a pretty decent feedback tool as cheap as humanly possible. And you can cut it with your fetter rather than with a sharp. So I don't own a sharp. I only have my fetters and I thought this was going to be a perfect little method of training. But the other thing that I think is rather interesting is that you can use some playback footage to understand what it is about paper cutting that is a good feedback tool. So if we go frame by frame here and we look at my cut, we can see a couple of features that are somewhat difficult to see uh, unless you can pause midway. And one of them is that when you're cutting paper, especially with a fetter, one of the most important things is your tip velocity on contact. And as you can see here, there's a lot of uh, not clean looking tear here at the beginning, which means that when I made contact with the paper, I was a little bit choked up, uh, as you could probably tell by actually watching my body. And as a result, when I hit the paper, it didn't have a lot of velocity, but when it ended, the velocity was a little bit better. So I don't have the cleanest line in the world, and you can see the paper ripples quite a lot. And whenever you're cutting, the one thing you want to minimize absolutely is that ripple. Because if you think about it, the method that you're going for is you're trying to cut through this paper with as little force feedback into the paper as possible, because the more force feedback it is, the less likely you're going to cut it along a plane, and the more likely you're just going to rip the whole thing right off. Uh, again, if you're cutting with paper, you just lower it. You keep going over and over again. This cut was a little bit better. There's still this little bit of tearing at the beginning. Um, as I said in the beginning, this is 30-pound paper, which means that the paper is a little bit less thick, uh, which means it's probably far more likely to tear in these first couple inches. But either way, after that, the line actually looks pretty good. And I believe uh, after this one, I do a not-so-good one, which I'll slow down. So you can see exactly what's wrong with it. But right about here, you know, the sword's invisible. It's moving a little bit too fast. But here, you can see how much shearing force is going into, especially the top half here. And if it wasn't for the fact that I was cutting down, this probably would have torn off the entire sheet right at the top of the roll. Luckily, I am cutting down, and I can sort of uh, cheese my way through it a little bit. But you see all this force, both in the bottom and the top, this is what you don't want. And the only way to get rid of this force is to have better al edge alignment and better velocity along a consistent plane. Uh, the more inconsistent your edge alignment is, the more inconsistent your angle of approach is, the more likely you're going to get stuff like this. So uh, as luck would have it, we have a frame right as I'm entering the paper. And you see this fold right here, right as it's pushing in. That is what's going to result in this tear looking like that. If you imagine that you're, you're tearing a piece of paper by hand and you fold in just a little bit the very front edge where you're folding, it's going to make this inconsistent scallop right there at the top. Um, I can try to give myself some credit and say that it's because it's 30-pound paper that this is happening, but that's also probably not true anyway. Other than that, a pretty decent cut aside from that beginning part. And here, I believe, I have another not-so-good one. And you can see, again, just how much force there is going through everything. And I believe that, actually, even though I passed all the way through, you can see the fact that not only is there a scallop at the beginning, like there has been this entire time, but there's a scallop at the end. 
And that's a result of the fact that there was so much force going into the paper that the ripple traveled through the paper a little bit faster than my sword and reached the tip down here and distorted the paper so that when it's all said and done and you look at it like this, you can see that there's a huge deviation in the line. And generally what that means is that I was not only going a little bit too slowly through the paper, but right here, my edge alignment was not consistent. And because my sword turned a little bit in my hand, it added tons of force to the paper and resulted in all this uh, inconsistency. I believe now I switch to left Oberhaus, which are another thing where you learn. But I guess if you wanted to uh, give me a little bit more credit, looks like my left Oberhaus are a little bit better structured. There was a bit of a scallop in there but I'm going to slow this next one down because I believe one of the reasons that my left overhouse are a little bit better than my right overhouse is because the extension and the point of contact is a little bit further out because I'm not used to throwing over my left shoulder. So I'm extending my arms better from my left shoulder than I am from my right where I'm a little bit T-Rexing it. So not a bad cut. Again, I'm all the way through the paper, and you can see how little compared to the other ones there is, uh, how little force there is going through the paper compared to my rights just a little bit earlier. Um, the other great thing about this, oh, and uh, this was another thing that had happened to me more than once. Um, although I literally just got done complimenting my own uh, extension, a couple times you can see how far down my arms are before my sword has made contact. That means I'm T-Rexing quite a bit. And the reason I'm doing that is because, as you can see by this giant pile of paper on the floor, I had been doing this a while, and I was actually not having a lot of good success getting clean cuts on the paper. And that was because I wasn't getting enough velocity whenever I extended. I believe part of the reason for that is that uh, because tip velocity is so important in getting through the paper with a fetter, um, if you cut too far down your sword past you know like that first third of the top of your sword you are absolutely going to get a bad tear even if you have good velocity in your tip go even two or three inches down your sword and if you hit the paper with that part you're going to get an absolutely awful cut so i was probably t-rexing because i was not standing far enough away from the paper and as a result when i had decent extension at the bottom i wasn't having decent extension at the top and as you can see, I'm not only getting that scallop, but I believe on this next one is another instance where I actually uh, don't hit the paper. Oh, no, this one was fine. It's the next one, I guess. I, I don't hit the paper until it's already partially through. And the result is that it's hanging like this. So what that means is that part of the reason my line looked so good is that the tip punctured the paper right here and then dragged it all the way down. And that really just goes to show you how important the tip is for getting those good cuts. Because if I was even a couple inches deeper when I hit the top of this, it would have given me that scallop like I've had so many times. So this is a great example of some kind of training that you can do completely on your own. It's very, very cheap. You can use the fetter you already have. You don't need to buy tatami. You don't need to roll it. You don't need to soak it. Any place where you have enough room to swing your sword properly, you can just hang this roll of paper and as long as you're willing to just clean all this up afterwards, uh, you have a great, wonderful form of solo training that I personally think engenders much better habits than Pell work. All right, that's going to be it for today. If you'd like to see your own footage featured on the channel, feel free to send me an email at hemophytebreakdowns at gmail.com, and I hope to see you next time.